I'm going to teach you one of the oldest and most fundamental slights in all of card manipulation and magic. Palming cards. Palming is a technique used for hiding or concealing a small object in your hand whether making it vanish, transposing, or producing it. In this case, we're going to be looking at cards. So the first palm we're going to learn is the standard palm. It's going the most commonly used. Chris Angel does this palm more than any palm I've seen him do. And uh, it's basically where you're going to push off the top card and palm it away, and palm it off. And then that way you can hand out the deck to the spectator put this in your pocket. This is the most standard method to palm a card. Basically all it is you have the deck in standard mechanics grip and you're going to control the spec the card that you want to the top. So whether it's a spectator's card, if you have them take a card, in this instance the king of hearts, if you give it a pass and now it's on the top and you want to give the deck out to shuffle it, you're going to push off the top card, push it up so there's this little bend in it and what that's going to allow you to do is line up your hands like this and lever down so the card shoots right up into your palm allowing you to hand the deck off to someone else. Now a method or something you want to think about when you are doing this is watch your fish hook because that's going to happen a lot where your thumb is like this. But a second thing is you almost want to try to learn how to give away the deck to the spectator using the dirty card. Because this is covered from a lot of different angles. So you should feel free without getting too many window gaps. Keep your fingers close together to hand the deck off. That way you can show this hand free and be like, I'm not going to touch the cards, but here you go ahead and shuffle these as opposed to you palming off the card and giving it away. Here, go ahead, and, and now it looks like you're hiding something. So, make sure to use the dirty hand whenever you have a palm card or coin or whatever you're using. But again, the standard palm is just, you're misdirecting them, you're gonna push off the top card in the middle of the misdirection, come down on top, and readjust the whole deck so you can give it away to them while the card is palmed. And as far as this, the whole fish hook thing, it's just something you're going to have to practice. I'll walk around the mall or around just places in general and I'll have just one card with me and I'll practice walking around palming the card in my hand and trying to have normal conversations with people where they won't know that I have a card palmed. And that's just something that you should just have fun with and practice with getting used to because palming, palming cards isn't easy, especially if you're first learning. You're going to naturally have windows or fish hooks, but it'll come natural with time. So that's the standard palm. Now let's get into some of my more favorite palms, including the one-handed top palm. Next we're going to be taking a look at the one handed top palm. I prefer this because it's something that can happen so quick and so subtle. You can give the deck right out and it happened just in the middle of me explaining kind of what it is. And what it is, is you're holding onto the deck with one hand and what's going to happen is your pinky is going to push the top right corner of the card and it's going and then now that the card is off, you can actually push down with your pinky. It's going to start to lever up into the perfect palm position. And I might use this as a method to get used to the idea of where your palm should be. When I was first starting doing palms, I didn't know if the card should be like super far down or if it was too high. But the one-handed top palm, for some reason, gives you the perfect 
placement of where that card should be placed comfortably and that way you can relax have your hand down to the side and uh, just cover it up talking miscommunicating misdirecting rather and so again you control their card to the top and what you're going to do is you're going to push off with that pinky it's going to start to create a bend in the card and you can push it down it's just going to lever up nicely and now you can use your pinky and your hand to just kind of manipulate around the card perfectly and now that that's all happened then you can even hand the deck off right there for them to take here you go ahead shuffle the cards I don't even want to touch them or it looks it looks also natural to have this kind of like handoff here go ahead take the cards but it's still palmed and it will be still concealed but that's that's the method as far as whenever I palm a card that's the personal method that I'll always use to get that card right there hand it off and then when it comes back you just put it right back on top or put the card wherever you need it maybe you need it in your back back pocket somewhere hand it off to someone um, an assistant but that's my favorite method for pulling a card push it forward pry it up perfect positioning now you got it now you can hand it off and the whole time you can be talking with this hand and it's free and give it away and that's why that's why I think it's the best as soon as they give it back put the card in their hand talking I actually have two cards palm so you gotta be careful with it but that's what I would use to practice getting perfect placement with the palm card this is going to be the Tenkai palm where you can actually make it look like have you have more freedom with it you can talk more I mean it's a little more angly but it's it's one of the very few palms where your fingers are actually very free and all it is is you may have seen the spin change the snap change has this kind of palm at the very end but basically the way you'd want to palm the card is you have it on top and you push it off and it's going to go right along the middle of your hand like where you're almost where your lifeline is the right side of the card and then your thumb where the joint is that's where you're going to lever it in and actually keep it hooked so you push off the card it's going to go right here you'll feel the perfect you'll feel it slip perfectly right here along your lifeline and then thumb comes at the top and just holds it in this position now you have more freedom as far as placement you could have it way down here but you gotta be careful because your angles are more showy so if you have it more higher you can play with it but the key about Tenkai Palm is you want the back of your hand to be at the spectators eyes so this works great if you're only doing it to like one or two people but if you're surrounded you gotta be careful with it um, but you can still achieve it with like a group of seven people where you palm it off and do whatever it is that you need to do there's a switch during the ambitious card where you take a card and put it down and it changes to a different card and that's because I palmed it off Tenkai Palm with the Six of Diamonds so the Tenkai Palm is another one of these routines another one of these tricks as far as palming where you can just walk around and practice different methods to do the Tenkai Palm so I would get used to also doing that maybe you want to palm one card in this hand maybe you want to have the Tenkai Palm in this hand just try to have conversations that people wouldn't suspect you to be holding or palming a card so that's the Tenkai Palm and one other quick little bonus uh, method for this is let's say spectator picks a card that you have them put it back in the deck seven of spades you have them put it back in the deck let everyone see it when you push it in square it up it jumps back to the top that was a palm ten kai palm where 
what happened was when I went to push it in, I just gripped it right in the Tenkai palm, pried it out, closed the fan, put the card right on top. And there's the seven of spades. But in real speed, it'll look like there's your card, seven of clubs, and then you angle it so the back of your hand's there, push it in, square it up, and now you have it right where you want it. Just another way to control a card and put to use the Tenkai Palm. The back palm is a palm. You hide the card and you can actually pull it out of midair. This was actually the first piece of magic or card manipulation that I had ever been exposed to. My uncle took a card and he went to go put it behind my ear and when he pulled his hands back he's just like where is it and I spent minutes like 10 minutes trying to find where it was and sure enough he finally reaches back pulls it back out of my ear so this is one of the oldest and I think one of the most fun quickest things you can do as far as pulling a card have it go behind your leg and reappear and all that's happening is the card is going behind your hand in a back palm and you can show your hands clean and empty as long as you're kind of waving them. Chris Angel did a trick where he palmed off a card, got on a motorcycle, and did the back palm, and waved his hand in the air to throw the cards up in the deck as he drove through the pack of cards. So he had his on the throttle with one hand, and in his other hand, he has their card already pre-selected. So like, yeah, throw it up in the air when I drive through. Drives through, reaches up, reaches up, and when he reaches up into the pile, he pulls it back, and he has their selected card. And um, so there's a, this is just something you can be really innovative with. Um, so if you were to do something like that, you'd want to standard palm it off first, have it hiding, and then like when you have your back turned, what you can do, an easy way to get into the position, would be to just slide it right up, and now you're already in position to get in the back palm. And so the way to do it is you want to hold on to it just with your thumb and your index finger. And what you're going to do is get your pinky and your index finger on the outside of the card, so now you have it kind of in this position where it's hooked up and you could essentially hold on to it like this. But your thumb is just there for practice or for uh, stability. And all you're going to do when you get it is you want your joints to actually be, you want the sides of the cards to be between here, between the first joint and like the halfway point between the second joint on both the pinky and the index finger. So this is a hard one to kind of like teach and demonstrate. And then all you're going to do is your middle and your ring finger are simply going to start to rise up as your index and your ring fingers pinch together. Because if you stay loose, it's going to snap out. But if they pinch together and keep this tight grip, that's how you're going to get the idea you need. And you can see where the placement of the cards is. See, it's between, around that joint, and right around there. And then to pull it back, all it is is just the reverse of that. Now this is something you're gonna need to practice because a lot of times if you try to come back too fast, the card's gonna snap out because of the nat natural bend and friction in the card. It wants to pop out like that. So, when you're doing this, the way it was first shown and demonstrated to me, is you need a little movement and it's just a smooth transition from here to here to there and then you just reverse the motion and get it in that you never want to you never want to start off going like this because the people are going to kind of know what to expect but if you're just holding it very freely very casually and you start to wave it and then you throw it up in the air it comes down and catch it, whatever you want to do, put it behind your leg, pull it back. It's up to you. You guys can be free with it. That's one of the reasons I respect.
Chris Angel so much is because he is so innovative. He uses fundamental techniques like palming a card, but incorporates it into something completely new that it's like real magic. So that's what you guys should be thinking about. How can I use these moves to do something powerful? These are simple moves, fundamental moves, but you can create powerful effects and illusions by doing them. So that is the back palm. Here's your bonus effect. It's the bottom palm, where you get the card from the bottom, the spectator's card, where you can palm it off. And you can hand off the deck to them so they can shuffle it, mix it up, and then when you get it back, you can either put, in your, put it back in its place and they can control it from there, or most times when you're gonna palm a card off, it's not to put it back in the deck. It's usually to put it in your pocket or have it go through a window or show up somewhere else on, someone, on your spectator in their shoe. You're usually getting it out of the deck for a specific reason, not just to put it back in. But the way the bottom palm works is, first thing I want you guys to learn is the buckle. And I go over the buckle a few times in like the ambitious card routine and other videos, but the buckle is when you're holding the deck normally like this and your index finger simply peels the top corner making this corner of the card buckle so you can get a break right above it. And what this is going to allow you to do is essential for the bottom palm because what's going to happen is notice how the cards bow like this, see how they're bowing like that? One card specifically. Well, for the bottom palm, we need the cards to bow like this. So the way to do that is you can simply pinch the cards like that as you're about to buckle, or even in the buckle itself, your thumb just puts pressure on the cards and buckles them the up and bows them the opposite way. Makes getting the break much easier. So you're gonna buckle, get the break, and then your pinky is going to do all the work. Your thumb is going to be used as an anchor at the bottom because what's going to happen is your hand that did the initial buckle is going to slide over just slightly so you, your pinky can hook that top right corner. And once it's hooked, all that's happening is the pinky is going straight down. And because of the bow in the card and your thumb being used as an anchor, what's going to happen is the card is going to start turning just like that. And with that combination mixed with your hand going up and then back down, what's going to happen is as your hand comes up, your pinky starts to go down as your hand goes down and your thumb's gonna let that card snap off into place as you continue the downward motion, readjust to get a grip on the whole deck, and then you can hand the cards off, like hand the rest of the cards off. Show this hand clean, and they'll take, they'll take the deck even with your dirty hand. Just be careful of your windows. And, uh, but your angles are pretty good from here, as you can see. So you hand it off, and then they'll see that their card's not on the bottom, or like they could look through, it doesn't matter. They shuffle it up, you do what you need to, but that is the bottom, call, bottom palm. Where you buckle, you gotta slide the card off like that, readjust, hand it out for shuffling, and from your perspective, may not, may not seem like much, but from your perspective, it's going to look like that. So not a lot of motion going on. This technique was used for cheating in cards. Uh, they would get an ace to the bottom and uh, the person would simply palm it off, give the deck away, palm the card off, keep it to themselves. So learn that palm. That's a favorite palm of mine just for making the card I don't know, visually change, it's a pretty cool look. But again, break down, reverse the bow in the card with your thumb, index finger is going to buckle the card, allowing you to get a break, 
your right finger is going to come over and grip it almost as if you're about to do a hot shot, modified long distance spinner, excuse me. Your pinky is going to grip the card because your buckling card pushes the top card over, allowing you to grip it with your pinky. Your pinky is going to slide it down just like that. So if you were to set up for a bottom palm, let's say you have the spectator's card in the middle. Now normally you could do a double underhook to get to the bottom, but you could also do the pass. And instead of getting a break on the top of the card, because you don't want to get to the top, you want to get to the bottom, you get a break just underneath it. And then you can do whatever method that you want to get to the bottom and simply bolt the card, readjust, pass the cards off, and you have their card palmed off to do whatever it is that you'd like with it. With palming cards, the most important thing is to watch your angles. Make sure you know how many spectators are watching and where they're watching at and to adjust your body accordingly. Because the last thing you want is a window to peek through and show the card or be careful of the elusive fish hook. So especially with the Tenkai palm, that's the most dangerous one to be watching your angles. So if you're going to do the Tenkai palm, make sure that you're not holding on to it for very long. You want to be a very brief off the card, whatever you need to do, I don't know, cut the deck, put it back on top. That one needs to be quick. But make sure you guys like this video, give me a comment, go back and watch all my other tutorials, follow me on Twitter at Jarek120, like me on Facebook, facebook.com slash disturbreality. Visit disturbreality.com and you guys can submit your own personal videos and be video of the week, get your stuff exposed and viewed by other magicians like yourself and even get it to seen by me personally. Make sure to subscribe to Evan Cloyd channel so you can follow me on personal projects as well as behind the scenes stuff on Disturb Reality. And if you have any success or failure stories regarding palming a card or anything, Make sure to send it to me personally at howtodisturbreality at gmail.com. And same goes for tutorial suggestions as well. I'm always interested to see what you guys want to see, so make sure to email me personally so we can get on the same page. But other than that, I'll see you guys next week. Remember to always be inspired to learn, inspired to disturb, and always rise above. is a technique used for hiding or concealing a small object in your hand, making it vanish, transpose, or reappear. Oh, damn. Palming is a technique used... Damn. <laughs> Hailing cards, God. I'm going to be going over several techniques today. Hey, guys. Hi. <sighs>